mobile, make sure we are actually online and <laughs> okay. get started so I can repost, right? Okay. Yeah. Do you want to have, let me just have a quick look. Yep. We are actually here. Let me just quick clicking. You look handsome. Thank I you. Look, I look, yeah, I look okay. <gasps> yeah. Handsome's never uh, been a problem. Yeah. It's always, um, yeah. Too, attra too attractive i mean you <laughs> <laughs> so good um good morning for uh for our uh europe friends right uh, is that morning or 1 p.m uh 1 p.m so afternoon it's 1 p.m so good afternoon and uh good evening for our aussie friends and uh, probably good morning for united states uh we are doing our facebook live talk with a good friend of mine uh very humble friends of mine and you know we had a lot of talk for the last couple of years which who is Andrew Hemmings um, a great a great guy a great photographer he is the um, wedding style photographer of the year with master uh, 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 master photographer association from UK he's also the illustrative photographer of the year so today he is going to share with us his award-winning techniques for his illustrative, kit, uh, you know, illustrative uh, category winner images, uh, which is fantastic. So, um, without further ado, let's get started. Andrew, thank you, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. So, uh, yes, um, I've won a number of awards um, with the MPA, the Master Photographers Association here in the UK, and it's. Uh, it's mainly been wedding photography. That's my what we would call bread and butter. That's uh, the, the bulk of the work that we do. Um, so much for my own interest. Um, I, I like to try other uh, areas of photography. And one of those has been um, illustrative. Um, and I found that quite rewarding. Um, always looking for new ideas, new techniques. Um, and what I'm going to show and talk about today uh, was actually something I came across from another photographer called uh, Howell Davis, uh, an American photographer. He's written a number of books and he specializes in a lot of flowers, um, nature, that type of photography. Um, what intrigued me about this process is that it gives a very illustrative look, although it's studio based. Um, the nice thing is you don't actually need a lot of additional equipment. Now, the technique um, that he uses is using light box, um, and that can be an LED light box, or some people may even have those old light boxes that they use for looking at their slides, if you can remember those. Um, I haven't got one of those, but what I have got is a studio flash and a, a large soft box. So I thought, why can't we use that as the light source and it also becomes the background as well. So you really need very little space to do this. This is very straightforward. It's not particularly complicated. Um, you can get some very interesting effects, um, mainly through going with a HDR type effect. We're actually gonna build the image up in multiple layers. But as I say, you don't need any special camera equipment. Um, you'll see from the video, um, it is quite straightforward. Um, there's a little bit more in the post-production. That's the, probably the part where you're able to style the image more um, to your own liking. Ah, so, uh, a stranger. Yes, know. yes, we have a stalker <laughs> on the line, I see. Yes, can yes. I, Kevin, can you deliver the, uh, the tequila to my table, please, like now? <laughs> <laughs> So um, possibly, probably the best way to give some explanation, um, if we could have a look a little bit at the slides, and you'll see the really Thank complicated uh, lighting setup that's involved. Share screen. It's application window. Here we go. Okay, so as I was saying, this, this is um, basically what we're talking about. It's a HDR style. It's not your traditional HDR, which sometimes can look a little bit artificial or over-processed. Uh, and we get this whole effect by using just one, one light. There's, there's no additional lighting being used for that. Um, 
if you can look at the next slide, um, these are some of the photographs I've taken previously, not with this technique. Um, this is just with um, a plain white background for the two left and right photographs and a single light and a reflector, very simple, very clean images. Um, but they don't have the same translucent look. That's the best way I can describe it that we gain from the other technique. Um, yeah. The center image that was taken, that, that was actually taken um, in nature, that was actually taken in a garden. Um, and that was another photograph that um, was award um, winning. So that was, that was quite nice. Um, if we go on to the next slide, please. Um, this is the equipment that I used. Um, the AD300, what was really good about that was the fact that it's got a built-in LED uh, modeling light. That was the big bonus for this particular light. Uh, the softbox is the one, obviously, that fits directly on using um, the Godox mount. And the actual lighting stand is a small lighting stand, if possible, or a lighting stand that will fold down low. Uh, because you'll see from the setup, we actually want to be able to look down onto the light box. We're using the light box in quite a different way from how we would usually use it. Um, I'm an Olympus photographer. Uh, there's not too many of us about, but there's a few. So as you can see, you don't need anything that's you know full frame even. I mean, I'm using micro four thirds. Um, that's why... Although it's a 25 millimeter lens, um, it's the equivalent to a 50 mil. So that's a standard lens. So again, I'm not using a macro lens on this. What you will need though is a tripod because we need to keep everything still, uh, no movement in between the different shots. So as I say, not a lot of equipment needed. You don't need a backdrop um, because as you'll see, the actual um, setup um, is the is the light box it's been the actual back uh, background for us so as i say on the next slide you'll see the incredibly complicated lighting setup um so uh yeah you don't necessarily you can take the plant out of the pot but that was the only graphic i could find um so we're basically just looking straight down onto the light box and the and the actual um flash is pointing directly up so we're, we're sandwiching in between the two of them I don't know, somehow I imagine you're doing the Spider-Man. It could be. You, you, yeah, yeah, it could, it, could be, uh, it could be the Tom Cruise uh, Mission Impossible. You could hang from the ceiling if you wish yeah. to do that. Um, but you've got to be able to obviously keep the camera still and don't let the sweat drop down as happened to Tom in the movie. Uh, so we need to keep that nice and still. So as I say, it, it, I think I, I could give it a try. But um, as I say, it, really, it is very simple setup. It's not complicated at all. Uh, and on our next slide, this is what we're aiming to do. We're, we're going to take multiple images um, and then we're going to combine them together. So to make our lives simple, as I keep saying, just keep everything the, the same in between each capture of the setup, and then we'll combine them in together. Um, so that, that's our general aim. We want to get those exposures in, and then we can model it. As far as the exposures are concerned, we... We don't want to go over, we want to go overexposed. We don't want to actually go under. So we're starting with an exposure that's correct, which is like the top left of the group. And that's as, that's, that's as far as we want to go with exposure. We don't want to go any darker than that. We basically want to overexpose. And there's about a stop between each of those images um, because we want to gather the, like, as I say, the translucent effect it's not transparent they'd be invisible if it was transparent we want that translucent effect on that so if we move on to our, our next slide of course thank you very much too easy sir do you need um, a couple of there wine? we go <laughs> it's on the way thank you oh uh, yeah and any alcohol is uh, greatly appreciated um and as i say um these these are the sort of effects we can then actually take using that so compared to um, the previous images of the flowers these are much more uh, stylized you've got a very white background to them a very high mm. key background um, so that's what works very much with that style uh, and it's a style that really attracted me when i first saw it 
uh, and wanted to uh, replicate that. I feel if like the, the plants from the God's Garden, like it's glowing. Yeah, yeah I nice. mean, it's nice. Yeah, it is. I mean, when you look at them, you, you, in some ways, you would think, well, that looks, you know, is that a very complicated studio setup? You know, how have they been mm. lit and and everything else? Um, but it's not. It's often the problem is trying to get a pure white background for a lot of these still lives. But because the light box is the lights coming from behind, it's it's not a problem. It's it's a it's it's a look that we can get, which is very clean. It's it's a really nice look to them. So um, you'll find on our next slide another example where you can mix the actual um, subjects. Here I've just gone from a simple. Oh, by the way, don't ask me what any of these flowers are. I have no idea. I I, I know how to <laughs> photograph them, but I don't know any names. I can't give you the Latin I thought, botanical I thought names. Going, oh my god, Andrew! I thought that you are going to do a Ophelia talk that no. explain every single flower. What does it mean? Like the you know the poppings or the, <laughs> the poppies or you know the um. The opening flowers, yeah, but yeah. they look beautiful. I think well, the best part is, you know, everybody could uh, could do this kind of photo shoots in their own living room, right? It doesn't have to be a studio. Oh, oh, oh precisely. You'll you'll see um, on the video, which we'll we'll come to in a moment. Um, you mm. you don't need you you don't need a studio at all. You don't need all you need is a light. That's all you need is a light that you can backlight with. Um, Obviously, it depends on the on how big you want the arrangement of flowers to be, as to how big a light source you need. That was one of the mm. things I quite liked about using a softbox because the softbox is quite a big area. If you're going to buy um, a light box, uh, you know, an A4 is not that big an area to work in. You can go up to A3, but it's more expense after that. Um, so that's one of the things that I found so attracted to this it was something you can certainly do as you see these literally were photographed in in a, in a living room that's all it is um they appear to be looking as if they're um upright but the flowers are actually lying down so we're actually looking down on the flowers but our natural instinct when we look at the flowers is probably to think they're actually in an upright in position yeah, yeah yeah very much but that's the illusion so on the previous slide on the slide we just saw before with the grasses uh number seven yep sure oh sorry i think i probably clicked the wrong um the wrong key yep here we go that's it if we go down to um the six. Two, uh, number, number six. seven uh, number seven please Number seven. Yep. Yeah, number seven. Um, again, these these all the items here are actually lying down flat. So again, it doesn't have to be just flowers. You can put in grass. There are some grasses in there. There's some um, other seeds and things like that. So it's it's only your imagination that limits on on what mm. you can do. So these I'm trying to look for quite a natural looking environment. Um, if we if we take the next slide, number eight. Um, this is just the heads you, you'll see in the video. Um, the, this is just flower petals. They're not very big, but again, because we have nothing to sense the scale, um, you can just add the color in there. The effect as if the light is shining through the petals, which you can see on some of the purple and some of the yellow ones. Mm -hmm. Again, that's something we can build up in the post-production to give that illusion that it, it's mm. that, that the light is really glowing through them. Um, mm. But it's it, it's not it's 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 an exaggerated effect. Let's let's put it mm. like that. Um, what you can also do is, um, which is a technique again, which if if people are interested in looking further, um, um, yeah, there will be some behind the scenes. Yep, I'm going to show those in a few moments. That's that's yeah. uh, a good question. Um, you, we can change the background. Um, color again this is something that um um harold davis um is a technique he shared and if we look at the next slide and again i will show you how to do mm. this we can actually switch from a white background to a black background how do you do but that it's it's a conversion in photoshop okay it, it's it's uh, okay. which, which which i'll show uh, but it's actually yep. going into lab 
um, as opposed lab. to RG, but yeah, into lab. lab. Um, yeah. But I'll show how that works. But we'll come to that. And if you look at, if you see the next slide, number ten. So stay tuned, guys. It's exciting. We're going to have some uh, advanced Photoshop uh, techniques yeah, to be shared today. It, it's uh, yeah, it is slightly advanced, but it's nothing. I think uh, you don't you don't need to be an expert in in Photoshop to to do this. It's mm. it's incredibly simple. Um, slide ten is another example of turning the white background to black. So it it, it has a very different look um, when you do that because it's not just affecting the white background; it's affecting light areas in the image as well. Mm. And of course, if you don't tell me, I'll be I'll be puzzled with this. Oh, how did this guy do the lightings with black background? It's fascinating. Yes, yeah, it it yeah. is. I, there's no masking. There's there's absolutely no masking being done on those mm -hmm. at all. So it's not that you've got to spend hours, you know, creating um uh with a pen tool going around each petal. No, it's 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 incredibly simple. It works better with some some subjects than others. Flowers with white petals. It doesn't because the white conversion is affecting the petals as well. So mm. in many ways, you're better picking things that have got definite color in them, such as the pink flowers and the green leaves. Yeah. So lily you know, is off the table. Ah, uh, it's tricky. Yeah. I'm sure you. Could, I'm sure you could do it, but um, why complicate life? Really, just choose your. I will send my. I will send my image to you to get you to get that okay. done. No problem. <laughs> Now the other, the other the other great thing about photographing uh, things like flowers and such like is that they don't talk back, they don't answer back. Yeah. They will stay there for as long as you want them to do. Um, so yeah. you haven't got to go out and find a model. You haven't got to go and find yeah. it. Someone to sit there. And you can spend as long as you want. It's 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 that's one of the beauties of it. You can carry on um, altering the composition, and they they never get tired. They just wait. Eventually, they'll wilt but hopefully you won't be doing it for that long. Yeah. The, the other thing I was also trying to think of, what, what other subjects we could use for this technique? So you want something that, that's got some uh, transparency to it. Um, and after having a drink, talking about alcohol as we were earlier, um, I, I looked think, down yeah, in my... If we, should, um, if we shoot alcohol from top down, that might work too, right? Well, well, it, well, it might. I was looking at my empty glass, which is always a sad sight when your glass is empty. And yeah. in there was... Uh, if we go to slide... <laughs> I think she's going to walk. A, I think I think she's going to walk a dog or something. Um, I think she's listening. Somehow, uh, do yeah. you think so? I, I, she, mm. she'll, 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 she'll be back. Um, yeah. If you if, if we look at the final slide, number eleven, before we go to the sure. videos. Oh, this um, is fan. Oh, this is fantastic. So this is what I saw at the bottom of well, not all of this was at the bottom of my drink, but there's some slices of lemon, and I thought, well, that's 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 got a translucent effect. Mm. We we could use this technique. Assuming, I, I was thinking you could maybe try flower um, feathers and other things like that to actually get that effect looking through. So hopefully that gives a little bit of a background um, to how we, um, how I got interested in this process of, of photographing um, flowers. As I say, I didn't, I didn't create it. It's something I've come across, and there is a lot of information out there. But I do it slightly different in that I'm using, as I said before, I'm using a flash but I'm using the modeling light inside. I will explain how we could do this if you haven't got a modeling light inside the actual flash unit. Um, but if we could look at the behind the scenes video, um, which uh, someone was asking about, you'll see how this was yeah. set up. Sure. Do you find my audio uh, be quiet? Like I've just, it's, it's all better now? It's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's altered slightly. I could hear you fine before, but it, it has altered slightly. Is that better now? Like I'm trying to. It's got a little bit of an echo to it. Okay. Um, wait. Let me just. Um... <clears throat> okay. Audio. Well, I can't find any sort of volume signs here. Wait. Let me. Um... Okay. Um, send some Q2. Well, now is it better? Is it better? Um, yeah, it, it's got it's got a little bit more bass to it. Yeah, it's a little bit a little bit louder. All right, let's just stick with this one. Um, how about now? Is it better now? It's okay for me. Right. I don't know if anybody else can say. 
it's just uh, people are asking, so it's, it's a bit quiet. Okay, okay, so let's stick with this way. All right, Mark, uh, th this is the best I could uh, I could adjust my Mac. I'm sorry. Um, all right, let's uh, uh, let's let, yeah, let's dive in and look at the videos. Okay, sure. Uh, with the behind the scene one. Uh, yes, please. Yeah. This one? That's the one. Okay, let's do it. Okay. So this is the complete setup. It's the, the Godox AD300, the AD65, as you can see on the bag. That's the actual light box, and that's just the micro stand that the camera's on. So that's as much as I'm using um, as far as lighting is concerned. So what I was going to do is assemble the, the light box, I'm just putting the diffuser panels in, and this is the position um, we're going to actually use the softbox in. Don't worry about the fabric having to be incredibly um, tight, even though you've got some creases in there, um, that doesn't matter. And then I found, um, <laughs> I found it somewhere, I think it was from an old cupboard, um, a piece of Perspex, um, and that's what I laid on top. And then all we did then is I power up and we have the modeling light on and you'll see that's that's it that's the entire setup um, mm. you could use a piece of glass but obviously be careful using glass um, if it came out of a, a large picture frame as I say it doesn't have to be a perfect piece of, of um, plastic or perspex I just wanted something wide enough that would sit on top of the soft box to actually do it um, mm. The actual tripod I'm using is actually a monopod with a tripod base. But any tripod, as long as you can tilt the camera over so you can look down, that's it. And that's all we do. That's, that's the entire setup. As I say, there are no backgrounds. There are no additional lights. Um, the beauty of having, as I say, the built-in modeling light is that that's my light source. That's all I actually need. Um, if we go on to the next video... You, you want the BTS please. shooting or the editing? Uh, the um, BTS one, the, the uh, number okay. two, please. Yep, yeah, sure. Wait, let me, let me just share it. Share screen. You got it? Uh, it's starting. Yep, this is it. So here, here are the flowers. As you can see, um, it's deceiving in the photograph. They look, they may look much bigger than they actually are. But again, it's to do with the sense of scale. And these were just some flowers picked from the garden. Um, I think flowers that have a large uh, petal and are, are maybe flat when they're open give a better style um, as far as what we're looking at. Um, so I just chose some colours that I like the look of, open petals. Um, and obviously some greenery in there as well. Um, but as I say, th these were picked straight from the garden. This doesn't have to be any particular flowers. It's whatever you have available to you. Um, I was just attracted to the different colors. Sorry, it's keep on. Okay, Stop we'll see with it. Yeah. if it goes past that point. Here we go. And um, like did you say, I, it? Did, no, I'm not touching. Uh, no, shouldn't. I don't think so. Are you? Oh, that, that's me. It's weird. Every time it's just starts to wait. All right. Okay. Sorry, Andrew. No, that's okay. As I say, this was uh, I so these these were just the flowers that we chose that I chose. But it's whatever you have available or whatever you can, you know, go to a florist and buy some. As I say, choose probably flowers that not so much flowers, maybe like roses, I think could be a little bit more of an issue because they're more um if it's an open rose, fine, but if, it, if it's a closed flower, if it's more of a, a bud, then it might be a bit more of an issue. This video is not very happy, is it, at the moment? Yeah, it's a kind of, um, I think there's a buffering issue or something like those. Let me just try to reopen it, see if that works better. Um, let me see, let's see if the place were on self. Oh, yep. Yeah. 
I can see Mark's asked a question about using the AD200. Um, you could use the AD200. Again, I think the main thing you need is something like a softbox um, to be able to put the flash through, even though you can swap the head and you can get an LED head for the AD200. Um, if you haven't got that, you can still use just flash. And uh, again, I explain how, how I would tackle it if I wasn't using a continuous light source, like the modeling light, how I would use a flash power setting. Is it still not wanting to play? No, it's uh, automatic stopped at 30 seconds. Oh, okay. So give me, yeah, give me a sec. Let me just try to um, share with another app. Okay. Will that work? Let's see if that works. Will we get past the 30 seconds? Yeah, I think Chrome tabs yeah. just automatically stopped at 30 seconds. I don't know why. OK. This um, looks yeah, this looks good. So yeah, as I say, whatever flowers you have. Now, this is I'm placing. I've cut the petal separately. You know, it seems terrible to mutilate the flowers, but uh, how could just, you? I know, I know, I just don't care. <laughs> Um, so I just I just separated them because I just wanted a, a, an image which was just going to be a collection of petals. And as I said before, you can rearrange them as many times as you want. At the moment, you can actually see the fabric, the, the creases in the fabric. That's because the light, the LED, isn't turned on at the moment. So we're only seeing with the room light. We're not seeing any backlighting. And here I'm just trying to decide on an arrangement where I want some petals behind others so the light will pass through. So I kept just building that up and now I've turned the LED on and that's when we get this translucent effect. And if you notice the um, the creases that are in the fabric of the light box doesn't affect and I've basically just built up the actual selection and that's mm. us looking down onto the actual images. Mm. Do you shoot with LED or with flash? With the because, light on? Yeah. Well, because I could use, because the, the AD300 has got the modeling light, I thought, let's use the modeling light. Um, and you'll see on the next video, um, this is, like I say, I'm using, a, I'm using um, the equivalent to a 50 mil lens, although it says 25 mil. This is on micro four thirds, so it's a crop sensor. So it's the same as a 50 mil lens. It doesn't have to be a macro lens. Um, what I'm going to do is bracket the exposure. Mm. So I'm on F8, so we have some depth of field because of the actual flowers. And then I'm actually using um, the Wi-Fi connection as a remote Fancy. control. Oh, I don't care. You see, technology. Um, yeah, love it. And then that way, I don't have to touch the camera. So there's no chance I'm going to move it in between the exposures. So I'm going to keep the, the aperture the same, F8. And then I'm going to bracket my pictures um, by one stop. So the, ex the first exposure is the correct exposure and then basically i don't want to go any darker i just want to overexpose so i'm going to overexpose by one stop so the camera's when now you, captured when you talk about overexpose do you actually change your flash power or your flash power stays in the same you just change the exposure well there's no flash power at all on this i'm using just the modeling light oh okay Cool. So, so, so I'm not using the flash at all. I'm using only the modeling light. Now, mm. if I didn't have the modeling light, then mm. I would change the flash. So, as Mike was asking, um, mm. the AD200, um, I would just choose an aperture f8, and then I would just alter my my flash power. So, I would mm. possibly start at. I don't know, a 16th power, then go to an eighth power, quarter power, mm. half power to, to build up those exposures. At the moment, it's purely the modeling light, and I'm just going one, uh, one stop at a time to actually build up those exposures. Um, as I say, don't move anything. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have problems in the post-production. Mm. As you can see, the exposures are just getting lighter and lighter and lighter, and that's what we're actually building it up. So as I say, I just use the remote control. Um, again, I've just altered the orientation of the camera, and this is another layout of the picture that you're going to see edited. 
and as I was explaining, the flowers are lying flat. It looks like the pictures are, are flow, uh, the flowers are upright. They're not. And the middle flower, I've actually cut the head off so I could actually position the head exactly how I wanted, looking up towards oh. the camera. I know I chopped oh. the head off. I know I don't know how I sleep at night. So um, that's 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 the whole setup. That's a, how complicated it is. It's very straightforward. Oh, that's beautiful. I, I did, yeah. It, it, there's so much you can play with them. You can, as I say, because they don't get bored. They don't ask you again. The um, the daisy that's in the centre again. I've cut that so I could position it upright, and I just mm -hmm. position the stem underneath to give that com uh, composition. You don't have to always be looking directly down. Here, I'm just looking in at an angle to actually get a different perspective on them. What I did do, though, was I just increased the depth of field. Um, I think this was shot on F11, and mm. my exposure time is one second. Mm. The, the ambient... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely need a tripod. That is one piece of equipment. Um, the ambient light in the room doesn't really seem to make any effect. Um, as you can see, I'm not... I'm drawing the curtains. I'm not working in the dark. Um, the, the backlight is bright enough that it, it pretty much supplies all the light that we actually need. I just I just love how simple this technique is. It's too easy. It really is. It's like it's so it, it, good. Everybody can try it. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I say, you don't you don't that it, see how much space I'm working in. The, the, it, if you can put the tripod and the light box together. Uh, sorry, not the light box. The soft box together. Um, you can do this. And the equipment, it's it's a standard lens. I know it's a 1.2, but it could be a 1.8. You don't need a macro lens. Um, as I say, I'm shooting on micro four thirds. It doesn't need to be a full frame camera. Whatever you have, you can you can certainly do that. And that's how I captured all the pictures. So that that's as the complicated. Best part, the best part is it's um it's very practical. Like if you you know, if you, if you buy 20 flowers or, you know, 30 flowers for your wife for the year and later on when you guys have arguments, she said, oh, you never buy me flowers. There's a hair from image one to slides 54. Here's how much I love you in 2020 during the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the nice thing is yeah. if, you if you photograph the flowers afterwards, you've got them forever. She can remember that you bought her some flowers, you see. So, yeah. so she'll remember how kind you were or yeah. how kind she's been to her husband for buying her some flowers. Exactly. That's, um, <laughs> you know, you have a proof of bulletproof evidence. So. Yes, yes. You can, hang, you can hang them on the wall so everyone can remember yeah. how, how, how kind you yeah, were. So this, is a, this is our birthday. This is for um, our Valentine's Day and stuff like those. Oh, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, this is it. Yeah, and and it's it 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 gives such a unique look to the flowers rather than just photographing them in a vase. So you you, you can you can go as crazy as you want with the actual composition and the design. Uh, you don't you don't need you don't need a lot. The the magic if there is any magic, um, is in the post-production. That's the part that it probably takes longer to do the post-production um, than it does to actually take the pictures. The pictures, I, I probably photographed those flowers within, I don't know, an hour. It was it was very quick to do that. So let's um, answer the question before we jump to the post-production, maybe? Uh, um, I, I believe it is. I'm... I have to. I'll be honest. I couldn't actually find any power settings for the for the LED for the LED modeling. Maybe um, Aries can advise on that. Um, I think it was on full power. Um, can, can you vary the power um, on the L, um, the LED modeling light on the on the back of LED? LED? Yes, between stop one to stop ten. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I think it was on full. I'll be honest. Um, I, I just turned it on. It's, yeah. That, that's how technical I am. Thank you, Andrew. That's very. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for kicking my ass. Um, yeah, cool. Let's uh, let's maybe let's look at uh, the um, ACR to HDR, uh, and we can further discussion. And uh, yeah, I, 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 there's a question from Simon um, about the actual shooting part. Um, he asked about if 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 we were um, yeah if we're using the flash power. Uh, then yes, we don't alter, we don't move the aperture, we don't move the shutter speed. Those stay exactly the same. We don't change that. We're just changing the brightness um, by 
decreasing or increasing the flash power. So it depends which way you want to start either, you know, once you've got the correct exposure, you basically then want to increase the exposure. So as I say, if, if you find correct exposure was at a 16th power on the flash, mm -hmm. if you're using flash, your next would be then possibly, if you're going one stop at a time, you would go to an eighth power, quarter power, half power, and that way you would build up the exposure. So yeah, don't touch the aperture, don't touch the shutter speed. If you're going to alter it with flash power, if you're using a modeling uh, lamp as the uh, light source, don't touch the shutter speed, just alter, uh, sorry, don't touch the aperture, keep that the same because you don't want to change your depth of field, just change your shutter speed. Just go half, two seconds, four seconds, whatever you find you need to get the exposure. Hope that answers yeah. the question. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Let's uh, jump into the post production, maybe. Yes, please. Cool. So it's the um, ACR. Right. Yeah, very good. Um, application. This one. Uh, yes, yes. Now I'm using um, um, Photoshop, and obviously this is a camera raw. I've got the um, all the exposures of that one uh, set up of flowers. So we're looking through the different exposures here. Um, I'm not altering um, any of the settings in the actual raw converter. The, I'm leaving them. If you wanted to change anything like the color balance, um, then you would do it to all of the images. Um, we're just waiting. Um, why is my mouse not moving on that image? Um, the only thing I'm going to do with this is, is combine all these images and create um, a HDR copy using Adobe Camera Raw, um, just so we have a file, um, which is something that Howard Davis shows, um, to use in, in the post-production section. Um, this video is not moving at all, although it's moving. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. This, this is... Um, Oh, here there, we, there we go. There it does. Oh, no. it, yeah. So anyway, that that image that appeared on the right hand side. side. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's okay. It's merging. Okay. From here. That's it. Okay. Yeah. So so all the exposures are being merged into a HDR. And that's the HDR copy that um, Camera Raw has made. Uh, and then we're just going to save that. I just save it back with the raw files that I've captured. And that's that's the HDR version, which isn't it's it's okay, um, but it's a little bit. Uh, it, it, there's more detail there than I want, but I actually want that information. So I'm just going to take all of those files, and I'm going to open them all straight into um, into Photoshop. You don't have to use Photoshop. You can use any program that. Um, were allowed to have layers and layer masks. As long as you have the option, you, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be Photoshop, uh, but you can do that. So this is now being opened up into Photoshop and then we have all the merge files together. So what we can do is um, see that's each of the exposures and we're basically getting lighter and lighter and lighter. That will be our base one and that's the HDR copy. Now, I'm just I'll going stop to you right here and yep. uh, answer a question. Um, we, 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 uh, Chris, yes, we could use Lightroom. Yeah, no problem at all. Um, exactly the same. No, no difference at all. Uh, you just you will need to go into Photoshop or a program um, that allows you to have layers and allows you to have layer masks. That's what we need. Uh, but I, yeah, you could certainly use Lightroom, no problem at all. Um, again, if you can merge and create a HDR copy, that's brilliant. Um, so yeah, no no difference at all. I'm just going to use the in the scripts. There's an option that allows you to merge all the open files into a into a stack. You you could do it manually by dragging them across, but this is just quicker to do that. Uh, and that's what uh, Photoshop is doing at the moment. It's just building the actual layer stack for me. The only thing I want to do is at the moment, the HDR file is at the very bottom and it's that one there. So I want to move that to the very top. 
so we're going from the darkest all the way down to the lightest as we move down through the layers um the other the other files that we've got open at the moment um we can close those and i'll close those down in a moment because we don't need them we've just got this one layer so i'm not i'm taking the uh that's i've taken the um um light level completely the um opacity that's the word i was desperately looking for down uh just to show you and all i'm doing now is i'm just shutting each of those raw files down we, we don't need them we can just close them and get rid of them so once we've got those out the way which will be gone in a moment as i say that they are we are really quite light on the on these really bright images they are very uh there's barely much detail in there and that's what we want okay so we don't need that one either okay so that's all of our files sitting one on top of the other and i'm just turning them the visibility off so we get down to our very bottom layer okay so that's the lightest part that we have so if we go into now what is the um onto the masking we've jumped forward quite a long way on there oh sorry that's okay I hit, yep Fine yeah. Uh, okay. yeah yeah that's fine that's great um so what i'm doing is i'm i'm, I'm going to you don't need a layer on the very bottom um, um um file um i've brought in a layer if you hold down alt when you press the layer key it will bring that layer up uh, so that mask in as black so i'll put a, a layer mask in in black so at the moment we can't see any difference i'm choosing a brush with a soft edge so there's no hardness to that and i'm going to lower the opacity of that brush down to 10 percent although I'll, i will increase it up a little bit to 20 just to speed the process up and what i'm doing now is i'm going to paint with white so my foreground color is white and as I start painting, I will now start to build up the actual detail. It does take time. Um, and it's personal preference, how much detail you bring through. So I'm just going to go over. I found initially that 10% was a little bit, it was just taking too long. So I will increase the, um, the actual opacity up to 20, just so we get some detail coming through a bit quicker. I don't know if you can tell. It's a little bit tricky on the video to see, but we are starting to see detail from the, the yeah, layer above. Really. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's just a case of going over the image and keep working that image and picking out the areas we want. Because we're working at 10% opacity, we can keep going back over an area. So assuming we click off and come back again, if we paint over again, it'll be like 20%, 30%, and we can keep building that up as we go along. The most detail that we bring through are on these lower images. So the first layers are what we're wanting to pull back a lot of the information on. So it's not probably the most exciting thing to watch someone painting with a brush, uh, but it's, it's quite a nice thing to do. It's, it's quite pleasurable. Um, I, I, I don't know. I'm probably showing my age now. When I, when I was a when I was a child, uh, you could buy a, a coloring book, and it would be just mm. prints. Uh, I'm turning the layer on there just so I could see where the detail is because it's so light in some of these areas uh, that it's it's very difficult to see. Um, but yeah, you used to be able to buy some coloring books uh, that was like it was a, a book that just had a, an outline of, of dog, cat, flowers. And you just have some water and a paintbrush. And when you paint it over them, the color would appear out of the page. And this reminds me of that. I don't know. I'm showing my age now. This is old technology. But uh, as I say, it's almost like painting. You're going in there and choosing what areas you want to bring detail back into and working back around again. You don't want to paint everything back in. You only want to pick out the areas that you want to bring that detail and if you want to get that translucent effect, then sometimes you'll want to create the illusion by painting more detail back in an area as if it's appearing from underneath. 
So as you can see, um, I don't know if you can actually see in that layer mask um, on that second um, uh, file up with the white area, I'm basically just painting in more and more. So if I turn it off and on, you can see how it's starting to pull through the detail. It's not going to be a lot initially because there isn't that much detail in those earlier ones. Again, Alt on the layer mask, it comes in as black. And then I've chosen again white and my um, uh, density is 20% 20, uh, 20 so again now there's going to be more detail because that next file actually has more density to it so there's more information actually in there and then we're just building it back up as we work through that yeah, occasionally it takes time to slowly build up but that's the fun bit right because you, you everybody has different version and in in a sense they can paint their own flowers right yeah exactly you you can choose whether you want to keep everything very uh watercolor like very pastel very light or you may want to put in more detail um you'll find that as you move up you actually want to use less of the of, of the layers above um, what I'm not touching very much is the background. That's how we get this very pure white background because it is just so overexposed. Um, it's, it's, it's as white as white can be, really. Um, and as I say, it's sometimes you have to turn on. I find I have to turn a, a layer on above just to remind myself of where some of the detail is um, because it just becomes as i'm doing now it's like oh okay okay i can see i can see there's a leaf there I, I just couldn't see the actual detail i wanted um so it's a case of coming backwards and forwards and and, and picking out the areas um you could think of it as like as a mindfulness um uh, exercise if you just want to spend uh as long as you want an hour or so um just basically just painting in the areas and picking out the areas it doesn't take an hour but you, you can take as long as you want uh obviously occasionally you may want to save the file just so you don't lose um what you've actually done and the good thing is you can come back if you've gone over an area which you think oh i, I think i want to change that just change the brush to black and then you can just go back in and remove the area that you want so again, I just keep flicking on occasionally just so I can pick out where some of these details are and actually just keep building through. So I'm moving to the next layer. Again, put the layer mask in in black, turn the layer on. You won't see any difference until you start painting. And then we're actually going to start pulling in some more detail and picking how, it out. How do you decide where to paint? Well, I think a little bit like um, probably when you remember that detail and um exposure difference is what draws our eye i'm trying to guide people's eye as to the areas i'm most interested in so probably it's the flower head uh that mm -hmm. is probably i want to put the most detail in um the leaves uh probably not so much so it's a case yeah, of just i, I notice uh, you don't paint so much on the leaves no i mean it's it's just building that up i mean you find because on the uh, those uh, very bright exposures, there isn't that much leaf detail there anyway. You'll find that if you look at the exposure, it's pretty much they are so thin that much light has passed through them. There's not a lot of detail there to bring back on those early ones. So it is a it is a HDR image. It is a high high dynamic range image, um, but we're not relying on software to to mask and create that image ourselves yeah which we had it's uh it. camera roll. remember a couple of years ago like five six a year so uh in landscape everybody was doing the hdr by yes. different kinds of software i can't even remember the name because the software styles they kind of phase out and all of a sudden mm, there's such thing called luminosity mask comes out and people yes. start manually blending that makes a lot more sense because it looks so natural it's more, much more painting like like albert beer starts as sort of Hardison sort of river sort of paintings yes I think this kind of reminds me of that it's almost like you paint your own flowers right it's a mix of between photography and painting rather than you know software very HDR-ish look it's much more organic I quite enjoy it 
yeah it is it's it's also if you um if you come across the um when people do light painting when they actually build up an image by going in there and lighting a car or a house at night and they build up the exposures it's it's not dissimilar to that in many ways um but rather than lighting each component we're actually masking out each part or revealing each part that we wish to show through so you can actually um you can introduce modeling by painting in more detail on one side and another so it's it is again we're back to painting with light uh, and we're literally doing that by um going over with a with a layer mask so i'm not actually altering the um I'm not actually altering the, the blending mode. The blending mode stays the same on all of the layers. Uh, you could certainly try and, and, and do that. Um, I'm not sure what I was trying to do here. Um, no, I don't know what was happening there. I was trying to change something. But anyway, we're back to uh, what we were doing. So um, we're getting there. We are moving through the layers. So as I say, it's, uh, it's a little... It's, it's a, it, I wouldn't say it's a slow process. It's a thoughtful process that you go through. And as we get higher, um, you'll, you'll see a bigger change happening as we come through the actual detail into the actual mm. images. Uh, you don't have to, if um, which I'll do later, I actually rotated the actual flowers so they're the way I wanted them to appear in the final image. But you don't have to do it on their side. You can, you can do it wherever, whichever orientation you want. Uh, and again, I'm just trying to pick out the areas that I think are more interesting, particularly where there's a lot of fine detail. Those are the areas I like to paint into as well. Yeah, I do notice your uh, focus is on the petals. So, yeah, yeah, I think that's probably the part that it's a little bit like the face, as we often, you know, mm -hmm. normally when someone looks at a picture and there's people in there, the first things we look at are the people's faces. I think the flowers are exactly the same. I think that's the area that attracts us. And then our eye moves around. I mean, when you actually come to laying out the flowers, um, you're going to use the same compositional um, considerations that you would use. So I'm trying to ideally make them look realistic. That's that's um, what I'm trying to put the composition. That's as if as if they're almost in in the wild. But I wanted to turn the head so it's almost like we have. Uh, if it was a person, it would be like they've got their heads turned in four different directions. But the one the flower I'm actually on at the moment, as I said before, that I've had to cut the head from the stem to be able to position it. Where I wanted it to go. So it's again, we just keep working over the image and picking out those spots that we want. Um, this this is the part that takes probably it, it is the longest part, but one of the parts that you can have the most fun with. Yeah, I think you know it's um, when people put their hands in the Photoshop on this, uh, you know, themselves. They will find oh okay this is fun i can do that yeah well it's it, it's not complicated i think sometimes you know uh, you see various photoshop techniques do and you use mouse yeah. or pink pad um i was actually well um i, I was actually using um, a, a wacom tablet um to actually mm. do that but to, i have done it with a mouse it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't have to be um uh, it doesn't have to be a tablet um okay oops, uh, clicked on close really because i'm not all i'm doing is um i'm not altering the uh, uh, the um the the opacity of the brush which is obviously something you can do with the wacom um the opacity i'm not altering that's at 20 percent and i'm just repeating if i want more detail i'm just going back over the same area again uh, but i was using a wacom tablet the only problem i find with my wacom tablet is is sometimes it gives me cramp uh, you know, my hand gets very stiff uh, with it. So sometimes I use a mouse depending on, on, on what effect I'm actually after. So again, we just, again, I'm just occasionally flicking on the layer so I can see where the detail is. Uh, as I say, we're actually picking out where I want the light to appear to be coming from more. So I'm add, add, actually adding in more detail. So we're, we're getting there. We're, we're building it up. As I say, it's not, it's not a fast process, 
And it's a process where, yes, you choose where you want more detail, where you want less detail. And that, that's what we're actually picking up on this. I appreciate the process because it's real time, right? So people get to see idea, ideally how long they're going to spend on, you know, slowly build it up, right, in a sense. Yes, I mean, you can. I mean, I've, I've got some other examples which we can look at where um, you won't have to. <laughs> I wanted just to show one process where it very much shows yeah. the, whole, the whole thing. Otherwise, mm. you know, sometimes I've seen people have shown things and you think, well, I wish I could, what exactly have you done? You've, you've given me an idea, but I'd like to see exactly the detail. So here, I really am picking out the, the parts that I really want the most detail to be in. So again, just going back over. Um, as I say, as you move up the layers, you'll find that you're using less and less. And if obviously, if you find an area that you think, well, I've gone over that too much, on that one, I just I just undid what I did and decided to go back in with a, a larger brush just so it wasn't uh, such a hard transition between the actual painting. Mm. Um, and that's what we actually are just doing. The very top layer, which is the HDR one, that's really just going to be the very fine detail. Yes, as, as Mark said, it, it's the perfect thing if, 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 you're, if you're in lockdown uh <laughs> you you can you can spend oh. it. yeah it is i'm sorry you're in lockdown mark um but um it's it's, safe, uh, Mike. well as i say the, the nice thing is you, you you can do this you haven't got to um have any contact with anyone else you just as long as you've got some flowers um uh and something to light them up with um you can it's like i said it's a bit like mindfulness it's a bit like everyone does these coloring in books um, here I'm painting back over some areas where I want to give the effect that the um, the darkness of the of the stalk is showing through the back of the uh, of the leaf. So again, we can add more modeling by going back over areas. What amazes me is that all the light for this um, for this image is coming from behind. It, there's there's no light in apart from the little bit of uh, room light that I would have picked up from what's been reflected. There is, there is no other light. This is just one single light that does this for us. We're not having to use multiple lights. Um, it's it's very straightforward in that sense. So again, I'm just going back around, picking out areas. If you want to go faster, you can increase the opacity of the brush. So you, I would paint in with more white. Uh, but we don't want to do that. Always make sure you're on the layer mask. Don't don't paint onto the actual um, picture itself. That's an easy thing to do if you if you if you click on the flower. So we're just now really just picking out the very fine final parts. We don't really want if we're painting too much on this top layer, we'll just end up with the original picture and, and we'll lose that translucent effect. And again, I'm just trying to pick out the real edge detail here around the actual um buds as i say i don't know anything about flowers i can't give you any names um and all the technical terms like leaf and head that's about it so again i'm painting here to give the illusion that the, the stalk is showing through the leaf it's probably not show i'm exaggerating the effect by painting over you'll see that more on the um the pictures where it was just a collection of petals that has more of an that effect and we're just adding in the final little touches here and then the last layer at the very top is the hdr one that lightroom created for us and that's got some very um contrasty detail that's probably the best way of describing that Again, I just felt that the tips of the flowers, uh, what, th there wasn't enough definition. They were, they were a little bit soft. So that's why I'm going in. And again, I'm just giving that effect as if the light's showing through the actual petals by painting some extra detail in there. And then this is our final layer. And again, I'm putting the layer mask in, turning the layer on, and then we can really go in and just paint, paint in some details. Again, there won't be very much on this layer that I want to use. 
it's just the areas I really want to pick out detail and I'm picking out the very tiny detail the very small um, specs and that is pretty much all of the actual um, layer painting initially on this So hopefully that, that shows the process of actually building up the image um, using the layers. I've rotated it around now, and then again, now I've got it on there. I'm just going back in, still on that HDR. Sorry, I think I oh, yeah. yeah, on that HDR layer, um, just to um, pick out the final detail. So I've just brought it around to where I wanted, just to go in and get all those details out. As I say, something you don't really want to rush. You just want to go through, pick out the areas you, you need. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm concentrating on those areas probably we've got the most detail in them and where I want the, the viewer's eye to go to. Hello, David. I said Mr. Edmondson has joined us. Good to see you. And again, I'm, I'm going over some of these areas where I just want a little bit more detail. Um, that's the main reason I'm using the HDR layer. I wanted some more detail in this leaf because it's got some um, quite fine um, veins running through it. And again, I'm painting back over where that stalk is behind to give the illusion that that, that is shining, that it's blocking the light coming through. I'm exaggerating that effect. Do you want to flip this forward just a little bit for me, um, Aries? I don't okay. know whether this is how exciting this is for people, watching me continuously paint on a flower. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. I'll be honest. It's something you yeah. can easily lose yourself in. You can, you can just... You well, just I guess just give the detail. Sure. Yeah, show people some ideas of how to yeah, do it. Yeah, yes, yes. Like I say, it's, I think sometimes watching someone else do Photoshop can be a little bit like, yeah, okay, we, 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 we've got the idea now. <laughs> or fa fast forward stuff. Fast like forward. Yeah. Oh, this is – if um, this actually shows um, – oh, just skip back just a tiny bit. Yeah, yeah. What, I've done, what I've just decided here was to turn off just so you could see how much detail is, is on each layer. So we look oh, at the very top. That, that's all there is on the HDR layer. And then basically, as we turn them on, you'll see the detail that was going through. So that, that's how little that each layer is contributing to the final image. And again, it, it's one of these things you can keep going back and fiddling with and keep adding a little bit more detail. Um, Again, it's where where do you want people to look? Where do you want to direct their eyes to? Um, and again, I just keep wanting to exaggerate that transparent look by going back over the stalks again. And I think that's pretty much the whole of that part done. So next. So the next um, is a um, – what I've done is I'm, gonna, I'm going to um, – just show that's how much detail we're actually showing through on the image. And as I say, this is a micro four thirds camera. This isn't full frame. So there is a lot of detail that we're actually picking up and showing on this. So it's you know, some images when you see them up close, um, they don't hold the, the actual um, information there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten the layers. I would normally obviously save all those layers. Uh, and I'm actually going to use um, Nick, uh, the Nick collection. And I'm going to use the color effect 
Pro. The ones I normally find personally is I quite like the clarity bump and the um, the HDR look. And basically, it, again, it's personal preference, whichever you think looks uh, best. That's the clarity bump, which again, just puts a little bit more of a snap back into it. And that's the HDR, which is a little bit more, um, hasn't got so much detail that I thought. It, it was a little bit flatter. There's a little bit more density, I thought, in the clarity bump. So that was the one I chose to use. But I don't want I don't want all of that detail. I'm only wanting to introduce part of it. Um, it does take Nick a little bit of a time just to open up the actual final uh, thing. So you might want to just flip forward just a tiny little bit for me, if you could. Yeah, sure. Wanna, uh, there we go. I think that's it. That's yep. it in in the clarity bump. Thank you. Um, so that's the difference it's making. It's just giving that a little bit more detail. I don't know how well it shows up on the on the video, but it just gives you that little bit more clarity yeah. in it. It it just it's quite a nice effect. If it's too much, obviously you can always lower the uh, opacity of the layer, or you can actually uh, play with the uh, the actual blending modes. So on this, I'm trying soft light, and I'm putting the opacity back up. So again, it's just giving me um, a little bit more depth to the actual final image of the actual flower. Thank you. Um, so I, I didn't mean to open that. And then, as I say, you can just play with the actual blending modes and that's back on normal. And that's the difference that's actually making onto that image. Uh, we could probably fast forward just a tiny bit, I think, on this sure. if we can. He? Oh, oh, yeah. I when I looked at the final image, I thought that some of the leaves looked a little bit. Um, that one was a little bit broken. So all I did was I just uh, copied it and um, pasted it back in, and then just moved it across, um, so I could actually repair the little bit of damage that was on there. So we can do things like that. So it's again nothing particularly complicated. Um, the nice thing is again you can just mask out. Um, so we actually, it looks as it should be. Now the leaf below that leaf, um, when I looked at it, I thought that leaf looked, well, you'll see in a moment when we actually zoom out, I'm just gonna retouch this back in. Um, all I need to do is just make it look as realistic as possible and bring some leaf onto the other side. And then all I'm going to do is just use, uh, because you'll find that if we look on the actual color picker, that, that background is is pure white. So I can just basically just paint out the, uh, the remains of, the, of where the leaf originally was. Um, again, when I was talking about looking at the composition, when I looked at the whole um, picture, which I didn't really notice when I was actually photographing it, was um, this leaf here, I just thought that looks like a monster leaf. That looks so big compared to the others. It, it looks out of proportion. It's it's too big. So again, you can always go in and edit afterwards. So all I did was uh, put onto a different leaf. layer. Yeah, I just I just I just picked out the whole thing. I didn't want to get rid of it. I didn't want to take it out because I still liked it. Um, I just I just actually just copied it back in, and again just going into um, transform. and then just brought the leaf down in size. And again, because the reference, we don't actually have the reference to how big the leaf originally was, we can play around with that. So you, you can reposition components in there. And that's all I did was I actually just um, took the leaf smaller and just removed it. 
but if you want to just fast forward just a tiny bit because it's only me just resizing this uh this um, leaf out and just editing you will see eventually this smaller leaf yeah that's great thank you there is no worries too easy too easy it is uh, for me oh i was gonna say anything you ask and uh you no, can do no, that, that's I mean, you, you could, uh, you know, you could build up um, a composition of multiple flowers by just incorporating them in, because if you're photographing them on the same background, uh, you can certainly do that. Um, I haven't added any textures on these. Some of the pictures on Instagram um, have got layer, uh, have got uh, different textures on. Yeah, these wasn't using this technique, Mark. Um, um those were like my earlier flower pictures which was uh, more traditional of using just a single light source and a background and i actually was able to it, i played around with some textures i haven't particularly done that with these 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 have got no textures at all on them so that i think is almost that whole one done should I go next? And that's part. Yep, yeah, that's perfect. So that's it. Oh, the only thing I did do was I recropped it. Uh, the bluebells again, just to show you. This was the the darkest um, exposure, and then all I did was build up the exposure by painting in the layers as we've done before on the others. So again, that's uh, more detail, and that's how much we're bringing in on some of these layers it's not it's not a lot of detail but you're building detail on top of detail so that's how that one comes all the way to the actual top and again it's surprising how much detail you've got in there if we look at this particular one um you might think well actually i'd, I'd like some more detail I, I, I think the the blues aren't blue enough so again you're just going to just choose a paintbrush with a soft edge and bring it down a little bit smaller and then we're just going to paint in some more detail we could probably skip forward a little bit because i think we'll probably now i've seen it yeah but we'll find that we've covered that so all i was going to do is paint in a little bit more of the blue and i'm just altering the opacity to about 20 percent and then I'm just painting in more of the, of the darkest layer that I've got. But the problem was I was on black and not on white. You do need to paint white. White reveals, black conceals. So uh, that's, if you notice, it's darker now because we're showing more of the, of the darkest layer, which is at the very top. <coughs> Should we skip forward a little bit? Just try and keep sure. it moving forward. because it's mainly me, again, just adding in more detail. I think some of the other videos might give a bit more. I'm just conscious of our time. Yes. And, that, and, that was the, and that was the final Bluebell one. Again, I'm just zooming in. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing how much it is. Yeah. This is Micro Four Thirds. Everybody tells you you can't, you can't do things with Micro Four Thirds, but uh, it's surprising. Um, and again, this was taken with a standard lens. It's not a macro lens. Don't need anything like that at all. It's, it's, um, it, it's not any specialized uh, camera equipment at all. Right. If we can um, go on to our next video, it might flick onto there anyway, mightn't it? Yeah. Now, this was the technique of changing the background from white to black. So I'm flattening the image down and you don't have to do this, but I'm making a second layer. So just so we can look at the uh, original, if we go up into our um, mode and we go from RGB color and go down to lab. Now, I don't know if many people have looked at lab color. Um, I don't want to flatten it because I want to be able to... Um, have the original white background if we look in our channels now you'll find that the rgb part has disappeared and we have lightness a and b um, the lightness channel um, is just density it's a black and white image a and b is where all the color information sits um, and they do when you look at the individual channels they look rather weird 
um, because of the information that's being held there. But to do this black to white um, background change, we only want the, um, the lightness mode. So I'm going into curves. The channel that's selected is lightness. And then all I'm going to do is reverse the actual curve. Hmm. And now we have. And that's it. That's it. It's as complicated as that. Oh it's. it's um, you can, if you wish, you can. Um, you can play around with the A and B channels that have got color information in them. The only thing you'll find is that if you just go back into curves and you click channel, um, you can't see A or B. It's like, oh, oh, oh dear. <laughs> where where has it gone? Um, so what you do need to do is come out of that, uh, go back into the uh, channels, and then just click on off the lightness channel, and then I'm going on to channel um, A. So that's the selected channel. And again, if we play with the curves, oh. we can get a different hue. Yeah. And... Um, that's the difference it makes. And that's, oh, as I said before, there, there is no masking involved. It's purely, it, as I was saying before, if you try and do it with white petals, it's going to be affected because of them being white. It does affect the actual color of the image. But that's the difference. That's from black to white. It's as quick as that. So it's not that that it's, it's not a complicated process at all. Um, I thought people might be interested in seeing this. They saw this being photographed. Um, and this is, um, again, very quickly just flicking through the layers. That's how light we started. And then basically I've painted in more. And there's more detail, as I keep saying, from the bottom layers. If we de disable the layer mask, you'll see the difference it makes for what's been painted in and what hasn't. So I'm just going to turn the layer mask back on. And as we turn them on, you'll see the areas that I've painted in starting to appear and again if you turn the mask off that's how much detail is on that layer when i enable it that's what i'm hiding and what i'm showing on those layers again some areas i want to exaggerate the effect so i'm painting back over some areas more particularly where the the petals overlap with each other which is those areas um round here and there and there i've painted in more details to give the illusion that the light is shining through and again this is really quite a small area if you remember when i was laying them out um it looks like they, they, you have no idea of how big those petals are and that's the uh, behind the scenes uh, uh that, that's the editing video is done so that great. that's that's as complicated as the process goes. Let's just um, let me just quickly um, reshare the lecture slides so people yeah. we, we have a quick summarization. People can see what's the final results. Yes. Mm. So as I said before, you don't have to uh, necessarily just have flowers. Anything that's got potential translucent effect to them. You can do it. It's exactly the same there. I've painted only the parts of the, the lemons and the limes that I wanted to show through. So cool. Yeah, it is. It is. It, uh, again, this is the conversion we saw from, from black um, to white. It probably shows a little bit better than on the video. Um, if you wanted, you could always um, – you could – if you've got the two layers like we had, where we had one with the black background and the one with the white background, we could again use a mask and we could always paint in some of the detail from the white background onto the black one. So if we wanted to bring some of that detail through, that's always an option to do that. But if you notice the um, the dark areas on the, um, on the bluebells, if you look at the top bluebell, is actually whiter because again it's been reversed so it mm. does reverse the light and darkness in the whole thing it does give a slightly different look but very simple process to switch from white to black and again 
it's it's a you can go purely graphic if you want it can be a very graphic type look and just pick out different details um you know it doesn't have to be just flowers it can be grass can be seeds it just just builds up the actual detail in there um it just takes just a little bit of time to paint in the details um and i think they have if someone saw that you would be thinking what well, how was that lit how, how, how did you like that subject where is it coming from if you look at the flower on the right hand side um what i quite like is where the the, the two leaves overlap it definitely gives um a bit more depth to it Thank you, Mark. It, it's definitely worth a technique trying. It, it's very interesting. If you want to know more, as I say, um, I won't take any glory away. Um, Hal Davis uh, is the person who very much um, done a lot of work on this technique. Um, he's, he's definitely worth checking out his work as well. As I was saying, the difference for him is that he uses um, a, um, a light box, um, an LED light box, uh, as opposed to I decided to use um, a soft box and a flash to do that but you've just got to light them from behind that's all you actually need and most photographers if you've got a soft box you just need a piece of glass piece of plastic you can lay on top you've got a light box you can do the same thing all right if there's no further question i would like to thank you andrew for your time you're welcome have a safe trip back to uk yes enjoy the rest of uh, rest of the afternoon should you guys have any further question you can find his instagram handles what's your or you know you can um, um go over his facebook yeah yeah i'm on facebook as uh, andrew hemming uh my instagram is andrew h 16 if i remember it correctly uh on instagram uh i have got the website the website's pretty new so there's not an awful yeah. lot on there at the moment the website is andrewhemming.co.uk um, that's only my personal stuff on there. Um, my okay. wedding photography is is on the on the wedding site, which is what I have with my business partner. Okay, thank you so much, Andrew, for your time, and um, thank you for inviting me on. I hope hope people found it interesting. No, I enjoy it. Um, uh, you know, Mark enjoy it. I'm sure people would love it. And thank you for your time. I will see you guys until next week. Excellent. See you, thank Andrew. You. Bye then. Bye.